couple of things that uh, happened uh, when I arrived there. I mentioned I was afraid of heights. I was also didn't like the water very much. I, was kinda, I never learned to swim very well. And when we got our acceptance letters to NASA, uh, it, you know, it said, congratulations. They call you first, and then they send you an information packet, like you know, when you, you get hired and fill out these forms and show up for work at this time, that kind of thing. And it, on the first page, it, the first paragraph was like, congratulations. And then the second paragraph was, practice your swimming. Because uh, you have to take the swim test soon after you arrive in Houston in order to go through water survival training with the United States Navy. And uh, I read that paragraph, and I was both elated and horrified at the same time. Horrified that I was going to have to swim, right, and, and, and go through a test and pass, hopefully. And elated that, that through this whole interview process of all these years of trying, never once did they ask me if I knew how to swim. I was happy about that part of it. Anyway, uh, when, it, when it came time to show up for work uh, that first week, at the end of that week, the swim test was going to be the Monday following our first, our first week. And I was a little bit nervous about this. But that Friday at the end of that first week, and it was mainly like an administrative week that first week, uh, Jeff Ashby, who was from a class before us, he was a, a Navy captain who was kind of leading us through our training, he said, uh, okay, Monday, before he, before he let us go home that Friday, he said, Monday is a swim test. And he said, who are the strong swimmers in this class? And we had a couple Navy divers and some people raise their hand who were the stronger swimmers. And then he said, who are the weaker swimmers? And he said, don't lie to me, tell me the truth. And of course, I raised my hand and a couple other people did. I was a little scared, but I did. And then he said, okay, everyone else can leave. But the strong swimmers and the weak swimmers stay after class. And you're going to arrange a time to meet over the weekend because the strong swimmers are going to help the weak swimmers with their swimming. When we go to the pool on Monday, no one leaves the pool until everyone passes the test. So think about that. All of a sudden, it was a different sort of teamwork, accomplishment, success criteria. It doesn't matter if I pass and, and another person fails. It doesn't matter if everyone passes but one. That's not good enough. Everyone has to pass. Your success now is a team success, not an individual success. Some of the other things I learned um, that I try to remember to this day uh, that I learned in those, those first few months were things like teamwork. In order to be a good team, in order to be a good leader of a team, you have to find a way to care for and admire everyone on that team. You know, and a lot of times when you're combining people, and we were, we were from many different countries in our astronaut class, people from different branches of the military, crazy scientists and, and professors like me, a lot of different people with lots of different personalities. And everyone was coming together to have to work together. And one of the Apollo astronauts uh, told me that you need people who think differently. You can't get to the moon if everyone thinks the same way. And because people think differently or come from different areas or different backgrounds, sometimes you might not understand each other. And you might initially not like that other person because you don't understand them or you don't know them or you whatever, they think differently, they're weird, whatever you want to say to yourself. But that's not, that's, not the, uh, uh, that's not the point. The point is you have to figure out a way to find something about each person on your team that you admire and something that you, allows you to care for them. And if you can't find it, don't think that there's something wrong with that person. Just think of you don't know them well enough. And this happened to me several times with people I've flown in space with, people I was training with. My first reaction was, oh boy, this isn't good. But you give it time, and you make that effort to try to get to know that person. And, and if you're thinking badly about someone, there's another thing I thought was useful. If you think badly about that teammate because they did something, try to get that thought out of your mind and think of something that they've done good or something that you admire about them. Uh, this, I think, is very helpful. You don't want these bad thoughts, these bad feelings infiltrate a team. It's not a good idea.